This is a Canon EOS 500D. It is a 13 year old DSLR model. It mostly spends its days as a glorified mantelpiece with its days of glory far behind it. Replaced by hobby photographers with smartphones due to inconvenience and the ever increasing quality bump of phone cameras, sadly, by all projection it may end up as e-waste in a landfill. It is no longer the hot new gadget it once was. But surely, that does make it useless. What if I could renew its purpose? What if there was some clever software, inexpensive hardware and firmware tinkering that would allow me to turn this DSLR into a web camera? Regular webcams may be inexpensive, but what you get in return is nothing short of average. Most low-end webcams are limited only to 720p. Some may give you a wider lens, while others provide a clear image. One thing is certain though, the overall quality isn't great. If you're looking to get something a bit more high-end, the price tag is likely to reflect that. So that brings me to the DSLR slash mirrorless option granted that you have one available to you. This is an excellent way to breathe some new life into an otherwise old device. In this video, I'll go through the steps and methods that I use to get up and running. This mainly involves two paths. The first one can be done entirely in software. The only prerequisite is a USB cable that is compatible with your camera. The other requires some hardware and firmware add-ons. More on that later in the video. Canon and most other major camera manufacturers have free webcam tools available on their website. Simply go to your brand's website, find the drivers for your specific camera, download and install. Initially, I could not find the drivers for the 500D as they were not listed as supported on the official Canon website. After some research, however, I discovered that I could use the Canon EOS T6 webcam utility and put that camera in manual mode for this method to work. From here on, you should be able to locate your camera in the listed software that the webcam utility tools support. Here I'm in OBS. To find the camera, simply go to Scene, add video capture device to your sources, then select the EOS webcam utility tool in the drop down menu, and your camera should appear. Make sure your camera is in the right mode. For my 500D, that is manual mode. If you get this image, try reconnecting the USB or restarting your camera. If you're already running the EOS utility software, not to be confused with the webcam utility software, they may conflict with each other and you'll have to close that while running the webcam utility tool software. So this was the first and most available option. As you can see, the image looks pretty good. While this is quick and easy, it brings with it some downsides. Due to the low bandwidth of the USB cable, I'm not able to get a resolution above 1024 by 576. The second obvious hurdle is the lack of a continuous feed. There is a time limit in the Canon firmware that prevents the feed going past the 30 minute mark. So every 30 minutes, the camera will do a quick reboot and you'll hear this sound. With longer live streams or live calls, you'll blank out for a couple of seconds. To remedy this, we go with option 2. This is a more in-depth option that requires some additional hardware and firmware. It involves getting a capture card that can translate the video signals from your camera to your device. The most widely used and easiest to set up is a USB dongle that translates the HDMI signals to USB so that your computer can display the feed in your desired software. There are a few options regarding capture cards. Most well known is the Elgato CamLink. From all its raving reviews, you'd think it was the obvious choice, but it does run on the more expensive side, defeating the purpose of cheaply reusing an old camera. 
Luckily, there are alternatives to this. You can get a fairly cheap generic model from either Amazon or AliExpress at the fraction of the cost. Make sure you also pick up an HDMI cable that fits your camera model, as this is what's going to be connecting your camera and capture card. The next two items depend on your specific camera model. If your camera has both a clean HDMI and uses a power adapter, you're good to go. If you're unsure what your camera is capable of, Elgato has compiled a huge list of compatible cameras. Navigate till you find your camera and check for HDMI type, power source and clean HDMI. If your camera is not listed at all, assume that you'll need both a dummy battery and a spare SD card for the Magic Lantern firmware. A dummy battery is basically just a battery shaped power supply that feeds electricity to the camera from an outlet. It may require more wattage than a regular USB 2.0 can provide, so keep that in mind. Now, let's quickly go into what the Magic Lantern firmware is and what it does. Magic Lantern is an enhancement atop Canon's firmware that frees your Canon DSLR, allowing you to use many useful features. It is an open, general public license framework for developing extensions to the official software. Magic Lantern runs from the card as an add-on over the standard firmware. You will still be able to access all Canon functionality. To parse out if you need the Magic Lantern firmware, you will need to check if A. Your camera has a clean HDMI and B. If it has a continuous runtime. These are the properties gained from the add-on firmware that Magic Lantern provides. If your camera was listed as not having a clean HDMI out, or a continuous runtime, both, or the camera wasn't listed by Elgato at all, then you will need an SD card for the Magic Lantern firmware. The file is relatively small, so any old card will do. To install Magic Lantern, the version on the camera will first have to match your camera's current firmware. To check what your model is currently using, navigate to settings by pressing the menu button. The camera may need to be in manual mode to determine which version is installed. If your current firmware does not match the required Magic Lantern version, simply select the build that you intend to use and get the link from builds.magiclantern.fm. If the link is dead on builds.magiclantern, check out the forums. Someone has likely had the same problem as you and will provide a working link there. Reinsert the SD card into your camera, navigate back into firmware and press update. Now we're finally ready to install the Magic Lantern firmware on the SD card. For my 500D camera, I had to use the experimental build that includes a Lua file that enables the camera to bypass the 30 minute live view limit. Once you've gotten the SD card back in your camera, the process is pretty much the same. Restart your camera and Magic Lantern should be loaded onto your device. Press the trash can button to enter the Magic Lantern menu. Once in the menu, there's a couple of settings we need to change. First, we want to get a continuous feed in live view. In your native camera options, there's a setting that allows you to set auto power to off, but the live view is natively locked to 30 minutes with the standard firmware. To bypass this, we navigate to the Prefs tab scroll down to power save in live view and set 30 minute timer to disabled. 
Underneath, there is a small warning message. This is likely due to potential overheating of the device when being powered on for an extended period, so do this at your own discretion. Now we want to remove all the clutter from the live view. To do this, simply go to Overlay, set Global Draw to Off. Next, we go to Display and set Clear Overlays to Always. All the way to the right of your tabs, you'll see two new ones have appeared. These are the modifications and recent changes done in Magic Lantern. It keeps an easy log if you ever want to put something back to default. At this point, the feed that used to look like this, should now look like this, with a continuous live feed. Now that your device is up and running with everything in place, turn on your camera and set it to video mode. The video feed can be found in OBS when adding a video capture device and selecting USB video. You may still have some black bars covering the screen. To remove them, simply go to Edit Transform, then at Crop Option, adjust the left, right, top and bottom pixels to remove the bars. Once you have your lighting set up, you can now configure the video processing amplifier by going to the video capture properties. Among the options is controlling brightness, contrast, hue and saturation. Play around with the sliders to see what works best for you. You can also play around in the magic lantern options, as well as Canon's options to optimize the quality of your feed. It all really depends on what you are looking for. And uh, there you have it. Some final thoughts on my discoveries while working on this project. Personally, if I were to do it again with this camera, I'd probably opt to go with a mix of option 1 and 2. I'd just install the Magic Lantern firmware for the continuous feed, and then run it through a USB with webcam utility. While the resolution is higher with the capture card, the processing of the webcam utility tool gives it a more refined image. In terms of spending on extra hardware, the total came to around $38 with shipping on all the accessory parts. If I then exclude the HDMI and capture card, that'd be around $20 for a dummy battery and tripod. I already had a spare SD card, but those come pretty cheap anyways. If you're on the market for a cheap camera that you also want to use as a web camera, I'd recommend getting something a bit more recent than the 500D. Maybe look into something like a used 550D or Rebel T6 if you have a little more to spend. While the 500D does the job better than my other webcams, it is pretty clear that this camera was never meant for broadcasting a live video feed. I also want to give a massive thanks to the dedicated members over at Magic Lantern who put lots of work into making it viable, so huge shout out to them. It also speaks volumes to the amazing tech that's found in DSLR and mirrorless cameras, even ones that are more than a decade old. Hopefully you found this video informative and helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe if you want to see what types of tech I tinker with next.